How's it going everyone? It is Andre Williams and today we're going to be going over SPY, Triple Q and as well as IWM. Monday is well known for setting the tone for the overall market for the rest of the week. So knowing these key levels is going to be very important. We also have some key earnings that is coming out from Apple and as well as Amazon and we know that they can move the market. So you want to make sure that you're fully aware so you can take advantage of trade opportunities. And the best way to do this is by knowing the conditions of the overall market so you need to know your levels so let's take a look at those charts right now then i'll be talking to you guys afterwards let's get started with spy so it ended up closing today at 457.79 being up 0.19 percent now we're going to take a look at the low and the high of the day the yellow line that's where we have the low which is at 456.05 and as far as for the high which is the blue line is at 458.16 so taking that into consideration, what else do we want to look at? Is it in an uptrend? We can see higher lows and as well as higher highs. So we have a clear uptrend here. And knowing that it had a green day going into turnaround Tuesday, what could it look like? So we could see last week, Thursday, it got to a recent high around this 459 and a half area. But this happened inside of the pre-market. So if we get another chance to get back up there, what's going to happen? So here's the thing. The last time we got up there, you can see we got rejected and then we came down to this 451 and a half area. So we end up getting rejected again in order for that to be bullish. We'd have to hold near the highs where we had today and even where we closed at. So what would that be around the 457 to that 458 area? If we are able to hold 457 to 458, I like it. It still sets us up to make another retest. And what are we looking for? That psychological area at 460. Why is 460 a psychological area? It's that whole number. If we break above 460, then we gotta start talking about 462. 462 is significant when I was taking a look at SPY on the daily and as well as the weekly chart. So again, a breakout above 460 is extremely bullish and that's why I want you guys to be fully aware about that. And that's why I talked about in the beginning, we have Apple and we have Amazon releasing earnings. I believe that we need to see strong earnings from them in order for SPY to even get to 462. But of course, I can be wrong here. Now, if we decide to break through the low of the day that we had today going into tomorrow, of course, that is bearish, right? That signals weakness. So where could we go? That's where we start talking about at 454 to the 455 area. We have to keep in mind, this area does have buyers there. But if the bulls do not show up, then we can start coming down to 453 and then easily start coming down to the 451 level. So that's just something that you're going to want to watch very clearly here. We also do have a gap on the SPY chart, which is right here around this 446 range. But unless we get like a really strong sell off, I don't see us going there anytime soon. Could it happen later on in the week if we get disappointing earnings? Who knows? But this is something that you want to know about. So that gives us a low down on SPY. Let's take a look at Triple Q now. So looking at Triple Q, so it ended up closing today at 383.68, being up 0.05%, so pretty much flat. Now the low of the day was at 382.34 and then the high of the day was at 384.88. So what are we working with here on Triple Q? So the recent high that we had was on the 19th of July and that was when it was trying to get to that 388 level, right? So here we are now, it had a high of the day at 384.88. So we know that there's a lot of sellers hanging out right at 385. So if Triple Q can get that break above 385, what's going to happen? It's going to try to get back to where those sellers were and try to get to that 387 to that 388 area. So this is something that you want to keep in mind. But how do we know that triple Q is going to be bullish or how do we know it's going to be showing strength? Well, guess what? In the day where we had all of that chop and all that consolidation, triple Q was doing quite the job defending 382 to 383. There were many times where I thought, hey, it looks like we're going to fall below 382, but it was just not happening. So knowing that the 382 to that 383 area is being well defended by the bulls, hey, if 382 breaks, where could we go? So if 382 breaks, that's where we have that whole number right at 380. That's a psychological area. If we break below 380, then the next area where we could potentially see some buyers would be at the 377 to the 378. So again, it's very important going into Tuesday 
that triple Q could hold this 382 level. Breaking below 382 is not good news. If we decide to have a gap up now and triple Q's holding, let's say between 384, 385 potentially, then it gets very interesting from there. But there's a lot of wiggle room for triple Q to move up higher. So I just want to make sure that you guys keep that in mind, especially if we have a gap up. 384, very, very important. We go into the open and we're holding 384 or even high 383s. We did close at 383.68. Boom. I'm looking for that move to 387, 388. And then if the sellers want to take over from there, that is completely fine. When we're trading these contracts, calls or puts, we're looking for at least one point and then we move our stops up. That's how we do in the private discord. Now let's take a look at IWM. Before I get going, why is IWM important? It does represent the small and as well as the mid cap stocks. So what are we talking about? Your SoFi's, your Palantir's, your upstarts. Again, these type of plays are in the IWM. So what does it tell us? When we see the IWM is showing a lot of strength, it tells us that the market is risk on, right? It doesn't mind putting money, putting capital into these small to mid cap stocks. It shows that the market is looking good. I wanna make sure I remind you of that. When we start seeing a lot of weakness in IWM, then we know that the market is going risk off and then there's a lot of pressure that's gonna go on those small and mid cap stocks. So now that we got that out the way, how did IWM perform? So it ended up finishing the day at 198.71, being up 1.16%. So a lot better than SPY and as well as Triple Q, it was strong. We had SoFi that released earnings inside of the pre-market, so that maybe helped a little bit too. But anyways, so the low of the day was at 196.92, and then the high of the day was at 198.75. And considering we closed right near the high of the day, only being like four cents down, what is the next level? So we got this 199.32 area where we have some sellers who are hanging out. But here's the thing. We're not that far off from the $200 level. And $200, you guys know what I'm about to say. That's going to be a psychological area. There could be a lot of sellers that are hanging out here. But if we get that break above 200, where's the next level? 202. So you want to make sure if you are gonna be trading IWM through options, whatever the case may be, that you're fully aware of this as far as what the upside could potentially look like. Now, what happens if IWM decide to show weakness? How do we know, okay, here's a potential where we could look and buy some puts. So of course, I'd be looking at it from below the low of the day. Okay, so it was at 196.92. So I'd want to see, okay, we're holding 196.92. We break a little bit below it, but I want that extra confirmation, right? That extra confirmation is around 196.10. If we break below 196.10, that's where IWM can come back down here. And we're talking about 194 to 195. Again, you don't need a massive move to make money off of this particular play. And just like when we looked at on the SPY chart and the same thing went for the triple Q chart, we have the higher lows, we have the higher highs. I know that's pretty straightforward. You guys are already seeing that already. So again, those are my levels for the IWM to the upside and as well as what to look out for for the downside. And if you want to know about what areas need to hold as far as going into tomorrow, like I said, it is going to be very important for IWM to really hold it down in that 197 to that 198 area so we can see a potential move going to 200. When will it get there? Hey, we're going to have to wait and see. But again, like I said in the beginning of the video, Monday tends to set the tone for the rest of the week. So at least you know what it looks like to the upside and as well as for the downside. I hope you found this helpful. Now let's get into my final words. So after going over these three names, now we have a general feel of where the market could potentially go, whether it's gonna to be to the upside or to the downside, you have your levels. So I just hope that you guys were able to take your notes and be able to find trade opportunities. I also wanna send out a big congratulations for SoFi for doing well on earnings, which they announced inside of the pre-market for today. And if you guys have any questions, I am I'm going in a different direction in regards to the channel, but I am happy to be back. And what I'm going to do, I want to make sure that I give you guys the tools that you need to be successful in trading. So that is going to be the focus. So I hope you guys are going to ride along with me on the journey. And if you're new to this channel, feel free to subscribe. I'll be talking to you guys soon.